AFE-091, International North American Transmission, Practical Air Brake Construction. Step one, drain all the air tanks of moisture. This is accomplished by twisting this little lever. For purposes of this video, it will save time if I don't drain the air tanks completely. You will notice that there was a little bit of initial moisture, but generally the airflow was clear. Step 2. Starting this vehicle, equipped with a North American transmission, the clutch is the equivalent of fully depressed when it is only engaged 2 inches. So the free play comes out of it and engages 2 inches and that is as far as the clutch has to be depressed and then the starting of this vehicle is used to be a key located here but it's been replaced with the ignition switch make sure the transmission is in neutral and start the engine once it's running smoothly check the oil pressure is up Zoom in on the oil pressure, which it is, and then you can release the clutch. As the air pressure continues to climb, that sound you just heard was the governor shutting off the compressor, telling it no more air is required. The next step is to fan the air pressure down to 90 and determine that the governor will engage the compressor and tell the needles to start to rise. So to determine that, we will start to fan out air. And in order to fan out air, we have to release the parking brake. Okay, there's the air pressure gauge. Ready to fan the pressure down by stepping on the brake pedal repeatedly until we reach 90 psi. We'll rev it up a little bit and see if, in fact, the governor has engaged the compressor, which it has, because you can see the needle has begun to climb, which indicates the compressor is, in fact, running, recharging the air pressure system. The second step is to continue to fan the brakes until 60 psi, at which time the low air pressure warning will activate, which must be both visible and audible. The illumination light has come on. But I have not heard an audible low air pressure warning. Okay, the low air pressure warning has not come on. We continue fanning to between 20 and 45 psi and watch for the safety brakes, the spring brakes, to apply our dynamite. And there it is. Now, we put the vehicle in gear and perform a tug test. The tug tests will involve releasing the clutch ever so slightly. And the lack of movement of the vehicle indicates that the parking brakes are on. We return the transmission to neutral. The air pressure should take between three to five minutes to resume normal operating pressure. At 60 PSI, 
the uh, and that's at a thousand RPM. So I'll rev it up to a thousand RPM. Sixty PSI, the low air warning devices should switch off, indicating there is adequate pressure in the vehicle. Minimum 60 PSI. It has now reached 70 PSI. The low air warning device is still on. As the air pressure climbs to 85, critical timing should take place. Critical timing will begin right now. It must take no more than two minutes, 85 to 100 PSI, or there may be a problem with the system. Those problems could include the compressor not working properly, or an air leak in the system. The brake pressure in the light has not gone off. We are reaching 100, and by the count of the watch, we are at 100 in exactly one minute. The uh, next thing, the air pressure will continue to recharge and fill the system until you hear the compressor shut off. The loud And that was the compressor shutting off. When the compressor shuts off, you can touch the engine off. Shut the engine off. All right, the next step is to release the parking brakes again. Now the air pressure will descend some as the air brakes are filling the chambers. And the next step of this process is to make a firm brake application of approximately 30 PSI and hold it for one minute. During the initial application, it should lose no more than 8 PSI. And in the following one minute, it should lose no more than 4 PSI. So it lost about 3 PSI at the most, 2 PSI, which is good. And we hold it for one minute and see how much air the system loses.
After 30 seconds, with my foot firmly depressed on the brake pedal, it has not indicated a loss of air. That's it. The results of our air brake practical examination is aside from the missing war low air warning device and aside from the failure of the um, visible low air warning sensor to go off the uh, air system appears to be intact the governor is putting out fine output well within the limits and the air is being retained by the system so there are no obvious air leaks. In a Class A inspection there is another step involved which involves um, breaking the connection of, of air between the tractor and the trailer and there are more things to check so this would be considered a Class D or a um, medium-sized truck uh, vehicle uh, air brake practical examination which is now complete.